Hello everyone, welcome back. This is um, uh, the last lecture of the series um, uh, for um, the business applications uh, with R. And uh, today we are going to cover the last topic here. Um, again, continue from the moving beyond linearity chapter. So um, this lecture is going to demonstrate the use of R, how it builds the um, uh, spines models. Especially we are going to see different uh, spine model like the regular normal spines with basis functions, uh, the no, um, the uh, uh, the natural spines, the smoothing spines, and also the local regressions. Um, at the end, we are going to cover the uh, GAM, uh, general addictive models, um, with the applications in R. So um, we would like to um, first start with uh, cleaning our R Studio's uh, global environments. Again, it's always a good practice. So um, uh, if you are having um, your uh, code uh, uh, for a project. It's always good to clear everything that you have run in, um, prior to this uh, project so that you are not mixing up with other global uh, variables or maybe uh, data sets. So we move that and today we are going to use the spine library. So the spine library has a couple of uh, functions that we are going to use today to build a um, regular spines or a um, normal uh, the natural spines and also the smoothing spine so let's uh, run this so again if you haven't installed it yet so please use the command uh, install.packages spine so you can actually install it and we are going to use the data sets uh, wage from the isll package so we're going to attach the data set wage so again, if you are not sure about what is uh, in the wage, you can always um, go back right, and try to um, uh, ask for the um, definitions here, right? so the documentations. So the documentation is going to tell you what uh, contains in this wage uh, data sets. All right, so uh, it's convenient because it's come with the package, so uh, the data is usually clean. So we're going to uh, basically start uh, uh, doing our analysis on this uh, data sets here. So this is the data sets um, uh, described in the textbook example. So we are basically trying to um, use the spines uh, data uh, uh, models um, to kind of give a, a, a better idea about how um, the nonlinear model help um, better explain um, the response variable. So here, today what we're going to do is to start with the normal spline uh, model. So um, to uh, build a uh, uh, regression splines, um, it's very simple in, uh, in R because we have the linear model functions already, so the LM functions. So you can actually build any um, linear models that you want, especially if you are trying to create a, um, a model like, um, like a qubit um, uh, spline models uh, that we've seen in the textbook. It's actually a standard um, uh, for using the spline libraries in the uh, LM functions. So what we need to do is basically call out the um, BS functions here. So the BS function has come with the, um, the splines library package. So uh, we can use it only if we call out the uh, splines library. And once we put out the wrapper BS, and it will become a formula. So in this formula, what happened is we are passing in h, which is uh, the variable, the predictor we are trying to use as a um, cupid spine. And all we need to do is to define um, what's the uh, uh, knots in our model. So how we are going to divide ages. Remember, a qubit spline model, it's basically a combination of the uh, piecewise uh, constant functions, which is the, um, the step functions with the polynomials. Uh, but instead of having a multiple equations um, to describe the model, we can actually take the convenience of the basis functions to put them into one single formula. So in this case, what, what we are doing here is to create three different um, knots 
uh, internal knots uh, for this uh, equations and we will have a cubic functions which is by default for the ages so if you are not very sure about the uh, specific the model specifications you can refer back to our um, uh, 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 online lecture uh, which we uh, did um, uh, in the in the last week of the uh, 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 lecture weeks so you can actually uh, um, define this specification here so what it takes is it will take age and make it a uh, cubic functions polynomial function so it will have age h square and h cubed and also we will have a dummy not the dummy variable but the um, the trunk power of uh, variables here uh, which is um, uh, the knots described here. So as long as we have three internal knots, we are basically dividing um, the age uh, into four uh, different segments, right? So four intervals. So we have the, uh, the lowest point age to 25, and then from 25 to 40, 40 to 60, and then 60 and beyond go to the uh, largest uh, age value. So that's why we have a total of for um, uh, uh, segment uh, uh, value uh, from our data set. So once we create the knot uh, with the BS uh, functions here, right, the wrapper, we need to pass in the data set, right? We use the age, uh, the weight uh, data sets. And that's basically how we define the, um, um, the regular um, regression spline model here. So again, very uh, convenient because we can basically just use the linear models. So we are going to run this and we store it in a summary. And the summary of the, um, uh, of the model basically tells you how many uh, uh, basis functions that you put into your model, right? So remember, we have um, h, which is one basic function, and h squared is the second one, h third, the uh, third power is the uh, third ones. And we also has uh, uh, four segmented um, ages, right? So that's why we are going to put um, three uh, groups, right? Three, you can think of it as like a, like a, um, uh, like a dummy variable, right? So uh, we know uh, that the last three right here basically giving you the idea of the uh, knot area, right? So if the um, age given is, um, let's say 28, right? So the, uh, the age is 28, it's within 25 and 40. That means we are going to take that value uh, minus the, um, the knot uh, values and take a qubit, right? So that's basically, uh, it's how we build our basis functions in order to make a smooth, um, a smooth curve right connected at each knot all right so again well if you want to interpret this um, coefficient here unfortunately you can and um, hopefully by now you should understand this coefficient cannot be interpreted uh, regularly because um, it's not actually a linear model like we did uh, before um, every single um, coefficients that we see in this um, uh, uh, net, uh, or, or spines regression model um, has a very diff uh, different uh, interpretations. Uh, unlike the, um, uh, the regular regression model, we have one variable and uh, we can always talk about the marginal change. But here, unfortunately, we can because, well, the, the, the spine models, uh, the, smooth, uh, the smoothness, right? So for, for the assumptions uh, to have the uh, first uh, derivative and the second derivative to be, um, to be continuous, uh, it makes the interpretations of the coefficients uh, much more complicated uh, than it was. So uh, that's why we do not interpret. We do not interpret the coefficients here. So again, if you're having troubles to understand the mathematics behind, um, please um, go back and review um, the uh, lecture um, that we did in the class. All right, so, um, but the uh, fortunate part, of course, is um, most of the inferences uh, still valid in a linear model, especially when we take a look at the p-value here. We know every uh, 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 basic functions here that we define is statistically significant. 
Uh, some of them are not, right? So um, here we have the age, which is not, but since we have age square and qubits, um, and also anything related to age uh, uh, below, uh, age has to stay in. Uh, the intercept is also extremely uh, um, uh, statistically significant. Uh, the last term here is not. But overall, we have a very, very good um, uh, uh, models that um, basically give us the statistically significance of each co uh, 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 predictors that we throw in to the model. And now, of course, uh, when we look at the uh, R square or just the R square, uh, seems like a very, very disappointing um, uh, um, disappointing R square right here. Um, the reason is because this um, data set is a very massive and uh, very very scattered uh, data set. Um, there is never um, a model that we can actually um, explain all the uh, all the variations um, with um, so much um, of the variance of the age in each age group. So that's why um, it, there is. Um, hardly be the case that we will find one linear model that can uh, have a R square. But at least uh, we know the spine model uh, improve our predictions. And when we look at the overall models uh, statistic here, the F statistics, again, we compare to um, all the betas, the coefficients equal to zero, uh, the model that we are looking at right now is still statistically significant because it has an extreme small p-value. So that means, well, all the coefficient here um, uh, at least one of them should not be equal to zero. So that means, well, this model is statistically significant overall. And the next thing is uh, we are trying to um, use some visualizations um, uh, uh, today and trying to demonstrate um, uh, the, the, the strength and the weakness of each model. So again, we just built the basic spine model here. So we want to actually um, create a visualization to see how well it fits the data. So first of all, uh, just like the previous lecture, we are trying to create a uh, 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 age limit here and also creating an age grid so that we can use it to plot uh, on the graph. So we are gonna create this here. So we uh, store the range and the range of the age should be coming from 18 to 80. So as you can see here, we have the limits here, 18, which is the lowest age and 80 is the highest age values in our data sets. And what we're trying to do is to create a sequence. So we're using a sequence functions to basically say, well, we want uh, a sequence starting from 18 to uh, the end point, which is 80, so that we can create a list of sequence that store the value from 18 to 80. So we're gonna create this grid. And once we create this grid, again, well, you can actually see it here, right? So that's basically uh, uh, the value, right? We have a total of 63 uh, uh, values in this list. Um, it's uh, by the sequence of 18, 19, 20, 21, right? So um, all the way down to 80. All right, so the next thing we want to do is to make a prediction for each age. Again, well, this is what we call a piecewise predictions, right? So we are trying to basically ask the question, oh, okay, if we given an individual who is um, age of 18, so how is the model going to predict the, 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 um, the wage this person is going to receive um, from this data set uh, uh, model fits? So we're gonna make a predictions. We're using the regular spline functions here, and we're gonna pass in the new data. And this time the new data set is not the training data, is not the testing data, but it's the uh, age grids that we created here, right? We want to know at each age uh, what would be the predictive value. And also we are going to define the standard error to be true. So that means it will also report not just the feed value, not just the predictive value uh, of wages, but it also create this standard error values for you at each age of your predictions. So again, well, if you are confused about why we're using a list equals to um, age equals uh, uh, age grid, um, it's basically the way how the new data sets will take in the, uh, uh, the uh, data. So again, um, this uh, age grid here is basically defined as a sequence. So new data here, the argument new data here does not take the data sets in sequence. It has to take the data in lists. So that's why we are basically defining 
um, a list so that the new data can reach your uh, H-grids. So we run this, we store this in the predictions for spine model. And in this uh, predict spines, uh, we will have fit, which is the fit value, the standard error of the fit value, the degree of freedoms, and also the residuals, the, uh, the scales. <coughs> The next thing is uh, we are trying to plot this graph right here. So we are going to first plot with the data that we have from our data set. So that's why we are plotting uh, the x-axis, which is age, and then the y-axis, which is wage from our data set. Well, remember, we already attach our data set, so we can basically just call the uh, column name. And here, we are going to define uh, the points, uh, the data points uh, with gray color. All right, so we have a plot right here. So obviously, um, we see this graph before, and um, this time, we are trying to use the spine model to fit the data points. So again, in order to uh, uh, create the uh, fitted lines, uh, we have to uh, basically uh, uh, use the predictive value. So this is basically how we add the line there. But before we do that, I would like to create a um, standard error band for the fitted uh, for the um, for the spine models. So again, similar to our previous lecture, we are going to use C bind to combine two columns. So the first column is going to be the upper bounds of the uh, 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 of the confident intervals. So we are going to use the fitted value, right? Remember, we have the predictions. The fit, it's basically the fitted, uh, the fitted value column plus two times the standard error values, right? It's the standard error of the fit. So again, it's coming from the predicted dot spines, which is something that we created here. So in this uh, uh, predicted dot spines, there is a column called se dot fit. So we are calling out the se.fit and times two. So approximately, we will get a 95% um, 95, uh, 95 uh, confident intervals of the upper bounds here in this case. And we also want to create a lower bounds. So in this case, we are, instead of plus, we are using a minus here. So the fitted value minus the standard error uh, of the fit. So let's run this. And now we have everything we need we would like to first plot the lines. Again, we are creating a line here, and we are going to pass in the h.grid as our x value here. So remember, the h.grid has a value from 18 to 80. So we are going to use it as an x value, and for each x value, right, 18, 19, 20, 21, there will be a fitted value. So we are using the, uh, the fitted value that we get from our previous uh, uh, predictions. And we would like to make a line that has a width of two and a color of blue. So there you go. So that's basically our predicted uh, uh, values uh, from the models for each age groups. So now we want to also look at the standard error, right? Remember, when we're using a spine function, there's usually a problem, right? So uh, irregardless, it's, it's a polynomial function or a step function. Well, the problem is we usually tend to see the standard error or the confident interval to be very wide at the uh, two ends uh, from, of our predictions. So let's see if that's the case here. So we're going to uh, basically plot multiple lines here, right? So M, uh, the mat lines. And how many uh, lines we are trying to plot? Well, we are going to plot two. So first of all, the x-axis still using the age grid from age 18 to uh, 80. And we are going to pass in two values in this case. The two values are from the se dot bands here. The first value will be the upper bounds of the uh, standard error, uh, I mean the confident intervals, and the lower bounds of the confident intervals. Right? So there are two things that pass in here. And then we are going to use uh, uh, the blue color to indicate. And in this case, uh, we are going to uh, define the width uh, uh, 
uh, which is uh, the types of lines, right? So this is not the width. So the LTA, uh, LTY basically define uh, the types of line you want to use. So we are going to use a dotted lines in this case. So let's see. All right, so we have the confident intervals for our predictions now. And obviously, we can see that the, um, the two ends of the prediction has this very wide uh, um, uh, confident uh, intervals here. So that means, well, the variation is a lot right, at the two ends. It's not good for prediction, especially if you actually uh, encounter uh, some uh, unknown values where the age of the person you're trying to make a prediction, it's actually, uh, um, let's say, at the age of 19 or 20, or maybe 75, then it will be very, very uh, uh, likely that you are going to make a wrong predictions because the variation is too high from your predictions or from your fitted model. So we want to actually uh, fix that problems. So one way to do this, it's very simple. It's basically using the natural spines. So remember, the, uh, the basic spine functions um, use the basic uh, functions um, to define the number of knots and also um, the, um, the power right, that you want to use. So um, you can actually increase the number of powers uh, in your BS functions. You can increase uh, the, the number of knots that you want to use in your BS functions. However, there is a more natural way to build a spine functions Right, so uh, we can actually define the degree of freedom that we would like to use to build the functions in order for the computer to figure out where those knots should be. So for instance, uh, we talk about the natural spine where you can choose a number of degree of freedoms and that degree of freedom basically define how many number of knots that you are going to use um, in order to um, build your models or fit your models. So here we are going to <coughs> Uh, try to use the natural spines right here. So here we can now change the degree of freedoms and use the natural spines with the NS functions. Again, the NS function here come with the spine uh, package, not the um, uh, standard built-in package. So if you want to use this NS function, you have to um, call the uh, spine uh, library. So the way how we use it is pretty simple. So we are going to basically use the linear model again we're going to pass in the response variable wage. And this time, well, the predictors are going to be a series of uh, functions, right? So it will be a natural spines. So that's why we use the ns functions here. So in this ns function, it will create a formula. So again, by default, it will give you a um, qubit uh, of polynomials um, of age. And all you need to do is to define the degree of freedom that you want to use so that the, uh, 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 the, uh, the, the uh, functions can actually define uh, where those knots are going to be um, for, your, um, for your predictions. So here we define uh, degree of freedoms, right? So this is the arguments that you don't actually see from the BS functions, but only exist in the uh, natural spine functions. Uh, the good thing is, well, the, uh, the NS function, the natural spine function, also allow you to uh, manually define uh, the number of knots that you want to uh, use. Uh, but here, we are going to take the convenience. We are just going to define uh, the degree of freedoms. So when we actually have uh, the degree of freedom equals to 4, remember in the uh, in-class lecture, uh, the natural spine function is going to take uh, the degree of freedom and then separate uh, or segments, um, the um, y-axis, right? The the not the y-axis, but the x-axis, the the predictors values into four uh, groups, right? Four segments, uh, sets. So that means, well, um, de defining df equals to four means that we still have three internal knots uh, to um, separate the data. So it's very very similar, very very similar to the setup here that we have not equals to three internal knots, where the internal knots are 25, 40, and 60. But this time, we're basically defining the degree of freedoms here, so that um, the, uh, the natural spine function is going to automatically generate uh, the quantiles uh, segments uh, for you. So here, what we are going to expect to get is to have 
the uh, natural spine functions to separate the H by these three internal knots, which is the 25th, the 50th, and the 75th um, percentiles of H uh, as their internal knots. And the value of H will be 33.8, 42, and 51. So as you can see, well, this is basically by default of how the natural spine will define the uh, knots for you so that you don't have to define it yourself. All right, so once we actually have the model, uh, we can actually run this and print the summary. Again, uh, this summary does not have some uh, very in, uh, exciting uh, interpreted uh, uh, value for you to look at. Um, the only thing that you can find here, it's basically uh, um, look at well how the natural spines right works. Uh, it seems like well all of them are statistically significant except for the last term right here. So that means, well, um, this model is still uh, doing pretty well, uh, extremely low p-value for the f-test, and also um, seems like a, a little bit better um, uh, uh, R-square and adjusted R-square compared to the uh, regular spines. <coughs> All right, so now we are going to basically try to make the predictions and compare it to the previous regular spine functions. So again, the way how we do it, it's exactly the same thing. So this is pretty generic steps. So you can actually repeat these steps uh, for a different uh, model you're going to use and combine the um, uh, combine them and trying to compare uh, and see which model makes more sense to you visually. Here we're going to run the predictions. So we're going to make the predictions uh, by using the fit spine two, which is the natural spine, and new data. We are going to use the age grids again, and I would like to have the standard error so I can see it. All right, so we make a predictions, and we are going to create a line here. <clears throat> so uh, we're going to create a predict lines with red color. So as you can see, well, the red color one is basically the natural uh, spine uh, predictions. Uh, slightly different, but uh, in the middle, it's almost ex exactly the same, but only on this tail, it's a slightly different uh, pattern here. And we are going to create a uh, standard error band, right? Just like how we did uh, previously. Uh, instead of using the uh, uh, predict dot spine, we are using predict uh, dot spine two, right? The, uh, the predicted values uh, from our second model. And we start, and we are going to basically plot the um, standard error, the confidence intervals, uh, with this um, model. And here it goes. So as you can see, the red dotted line seems like a very um, uh, close to the blue lines, right? So let's uh, zoom in a little bit here so we can see it. <clears throat> so obviously we have a much narrower band right here um, uh, for the confidence intervals uh, in the red dotted lines comparing to the blue ones, right? Obviously uh, much more uh, wider. So that basically demonstrates how well our model actually doing uh, comparing to the first model. So the natural spine uh, model, it's usually, usually in most cases, it's preferred over the regular um, uh, spine, uh, basis function spines uh, models. So um, just a little hints of tips, um, if you ever consider to use a uh, spine functions uh, for your predictions, um, you can almost, almost, again, to skip the BS functions, and immediately jump into using the uh, NS functions uh, because the natural spine function has this capability. Uh, 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 indeed, if you uh, 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 go back to our uh, class lecture, you know that the natural spine had this one very strict uh, addictive uh, assumptions. So we add that one assumptions where the two ends of the uh, predictions has to be continuous. So this, uh, predictions uh, or this uh, assumptions here uh, make uh, the predictions at the two ends much more stable, much more um, uh, 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 narrowed uh, the, the error or the confidence intervals uh, in this case. So that's why, well, if you ever consider using the, uh, the spine functions, uh, you can Im almost always immediately use the uh, NS uh, functions instead of the BS functions built in uh, with the uh, uh, spine libraries. <coughs> All right, so we get a very good, exciting result here. Seems like we are moving uh, uh, um, uh, from the uh, uh, sophisticated model to a more sophisticated, sophisticated model. 
So now what we want to do is to um, think about how other uh, spine model will work. Like for example, we learn about the smoothing spines. So again, the concept of natural spine and smoothing spines are very, very different. So you do not want to confuse them. The natural spine use the linear model to make a predictions or fit the models, to fit the data. However, the smoothing spine does not use a linear regression model. The smoothing spine basically assumes that there is a black box function. There is a function, like a very novel team functions that can fit every single data point or most of the data points in our data sets. However, uh, even though we know that there is this one weird, very novelty uh, equations that we can use to, um, to make a predictions uh, 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 for the data, uh, but we want to penalize it, right? We want to penalize um, how flexible the model is. The more flexible it is, we want to actually penalize more so that we are trying to not overfit the data. We don't want this model, right, this unknown uh, black box function to be so flexible that we're fitting every single data point, but we w wouldn't be able to use it for predictions. So that's basically the whole idea for a smoothing spine. So the smoothing spine assumes that we have to put in some uh, parameters into our, uh, our models um, so that we can actually penalize the flexibility of the model. And that parameter is uh, what we call the lambda, right? So the lambda that we've seen in the textbooks. So here we are going to define uh, uh, the number of uh, uh, VDOMs, which is the uh, value of lambda uh, to be used for a smoothing spine um, uh, 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 regressions. So here, what we want to do is to use this new predictive functions, smoothed up spines. So this is the first time you've seen this. It's not LM model. Again, we are not using linear model here, but we are using a smoothing spine function. So this smoothing spine function is going to um, try to find any possible um, uh, uh, flexible functions uh, to fit uh, the, uh, the X variable here, the predictor, and also the Y variable here, which is the response. And here, what you need to do is to define the degree of freedom that you allow uh, uh, to use. So you want to actually tell the smooth, uh, smoothing spine regressions, well, how flexible right, you want to uh, uh, basically um, allow uh, for plotting these novelty uh, uh, equations. So again, well, uh, I'm going to use we, uh, start with uh, degree of freedom 16, and then later I'm going to uh, basically use the cross validations uh, to find the optimal um, uh, values for this uh, degree of freedoms instead of just like randomly bumping into some number, uh, because usually uh, the degree of freedoms uh, or the lambda that we define here uh, might not be even an integer. So, and in most cases, it's not an integer. So you might actually get into a number like. 3.5, 5.6, and 4.31. So I'm going to use 16 first and try to compare result later. So I'm going to store this into uh, fit.ls. And using the uh, uh, smoothing spines uh, functions here, uh, it's very convenient um, to basically uh, uh, build the uh, model with uh, the cross validation process uh, because it has this built in arguments here where you can actually just pass in the predictor and the response and use this argument here instead of df um, you can use cv which is a built-in argument for this uh, smoothing spine functions that you can actually set it to be true and what it does it's basically go through the cross validation process and trying to find the level of degree of freedom or the flexibility that you allow for the model in order to drive the optimal predictions, optimal, right? The, the best uh, predictions. All right, so we're gonna uh, basically build this uh, model here <coughs> with the cross validations, um, um, optimal uh, degree of freedoms, and we were gonna save it to the fit SS2. Uh, and in this uh, output, uh, there are many names that you can actually find, like especially um, you can find the X, Y, W, right? So the Y, uh, and and also um, uh, lambda right so what's the lambda you use um, 
<coughs> and also um, the fits right of the model the degree of freedom those are the important things that you can actually retrieve uh, from the um, from the fits but here we are not <coughs> very interesting in um, like looking at any uh, kind of summary output because there is no linear regression output that you can get it's basically a novelty equation this is by defining well, what's the degree of freedom you're allowed to use all right so here what we want to do is to basically look at well what is the degree of freedom that is chosen by the cross validations right is it 16 did we get a, a, a best guess um, uh, from the first try so we're going to basically uh, print this so here the cross validations process actually confirm the degree of freedoms that drive the optimal uh, uh, predictions will be 6.7954596. So this is basically the degree of freedom that maximize the predictive powers of, from this uh, natural uh, smoothing spine models. So uh, that's why we are going to use this. So again, well, if you are confused, well, um, just want to make it very simple case for you. Um, in the smoothing spine model, we almost never use um, the degree of freedoms uh, argument here unless you have some very uh, specific um, uh, uh, purpose that you want to test uh, from the model um, otherwise um, mo in most cases uh, when you're building a smoothing spine functions you are always going to use uh, CV that's true argument here because you do not want to guess the best model you want to actually let the um, uh, computer to figure out what is the best values of degree of freedom that you are going to use for your predictions so that's why um, it's basically uh, a priority for using this um, uh, the model here all right so <clears throat> moving forward uh, we can plot right so uh, let's first plot the uh, data here just like we previously does so we have the data sets right here in gray color and we would like to also plot the predictions from our model fit so remember, in this case, we don't really care much about um, uh, the confident interval here because uh, we just want to see how the two models compare, the degree of free uh, freedom of 16 and also the uh, optimal degree of freedom, 6.79. So I'm going to basically um, plot the lines to the graph. And this time, for uh, it's very convenient because, well, the fits, uh, .ss, the model itself, contain the fitted value. So you don't have to define the grid and also the, the fitted value. Unless you want to plot the uh, confident intervals again, um, you can actually go back and try to uh, plot the confident interval by creating the grids and also all this stuff. Uh, but this time, we just want to compare the first model in red color. Oopsie. Okay, so okay, so let's see. Uh, okay, so let's see. Guess I have to um, clear it all. Do it this. <coughs> so I guess I just run all the codes uh, at once. Sorry, I touching it. So let's uh, load this up again. So this time we are going to create this. We're probably gonna. <coughs> All right, so we have the natural spine right here. Oh, no, still not yet. So we have the natural spines. Okay, so we have the plot. Okay, so now we are going to basically use the lines right here, red color lines. Okay, so that's our first model using degree of freedom 16 which is um, uh, the larger the number it is um, the, the more f degree of freedom you allow the more flexible right more 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 wiggling of the line you should expect to see the the less uh, degree of freedom you allow the more likely the line will be smooth and not jumpy not um, going from one point to another point it will be a little bit smoother so here uh, the second model <coughs> So as you can see, the blue lines uh, basically is the smoother uh, uh, functions here, and the uh, red lines it's basically the one that it's very jumpy, right? So it's very uh, high variance. Um, so the 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 higher the variance it is, again remember we do not want to overfit the data, so we want to actually come up with a functions that can also fit the training data well and also make a good predictions in the future. 
So in this case, obviously the optimal uh, model here with degree of freedom 6.79 uh, will be the best, uh, better ones, obviously, right? So comparatively better one to the first model we built with degree of freedom of 16. All right, so that's basically um, another way to build a uh, predictive model, right? With uh, smoothing spines, which is very convenient, very, very sophisticated. Um, uh, a lot of math involved, but then, um, well, using R, it's not so difficult to uh, basically get the results. All right, so the last, uh, 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 not the last, but the, 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 uh, before we jump into the, the most sophisticated models, uh, we have this one more right here, which is the local regression line. So this one is, again, well, very easy to do in um, R. So um, the only one thing that you have to put in in a local regression model, it's basically to define the, uh, the, the, the parameter span. Right. Remember, the span basically defines the portions of the data you're allowed to use uh, to, for your predictions uh, to actually uh, include it uh, in each values uh, of x. Right. So let's say in this case, uh, we are going to use the local regression uh, model and the function we're going to use, uh, it's LOS, uh, LOESS right here. So this is the uh, local uh, regression uh, models that we can use. And again, we are not building a linear model here. We are using a local regression lines. So <clears throat> it's very similar. We are going to pass in the response variable and we're gonna also define what is the, um, uh, the, uh, uh, the predictors, right? So in this case, same thing, we are using age. And here, we're gonna put in this argument here. Uh, span equals to 0 0.2. So again, if you are struggling with this parameter, this parameter is very intuitive. It basically tells you how men, what is the proportions of your observation you will be used to the closest of your predictive value. So for instance, let's say, well, you pick the age of like 25 uh, to predict the wage. So you want to use only the 20% of your data sets that near the age of 25, the, the closest, the closest 20% of your observation to the age of 25 in order to build a local regressions, right? A local lines at the age of 25. So you want to use like a, all the neighbors around 25 of age in order to build a regression lines. And that's basically the idea for building a local regression model. So uh, as you can imagine, if you have a span equals to one, that means, well, every time when you're actually looking at a specific age, you are using all the observations um, in, your, in, your, um, in, your, in your data sets, 100%, uh, right? One means 100%. All your observation to build a local regression lines at that particular X value. So in this case, well, obviously, well, it's not going to be very different to um, uh, basically uh, doing the uh, the co uh, the uh, uh, the cost uh, the piecewise uh, constant functions at every single age. So again, well, we are not going to uh, uh, investigate too much time uh, for uh, the comparison here, but I just want to be um, a very specific point out. This is important for you to define, and you have to define well what is the proportions of those observations that you want to use in order to build that uh, local regression lines um, around that predicted values. All right, so again, we're using all the data sets to pass in, right, to build this model. So we're gonna fit this local regression model and we are going to uh, run a predictions here. So we're gonna use uh, uh, the predicted uh, uh, functions here. We use the local regression model and we are going to use the age grids right here to create a uh, predictions for every age right here. And we are also going to uh, basically compare to a second model here. So the second model is basically using a different span parameter. So instead of 20% of your observations for your predictions, uh, this time you are basically using 50% uh, of the observation near uh, uh, that neighbors um, to make a predictions, right, of your uh, predictive values. So we're gonna use this, right, and run the predictions for every age groups, right, uh, in our data sets from 18 to 80. 
and we're going to plot the graph again and we're going to see how well uh, each model actually uh, fits to the data. So the first model right here in blue color uh, which is using a parameter equals to uh, 0 0.2 which is 20% of the data at each age. So imagine uh, if we are pointing at the age of 30 what we mean is we are trying to build a regression lines around the age of 30 and how many observations we want to use in order to build a regression lines at the age of 30 we are trying to use 20% of the data observations right so we are including all the things around 30 uh, which add up to about 20% of the observations for a uh, regression line uh, models so <clears throat> that's the blue lines and then we have the red line right here so as you can see the red line is going to be a smoother curve comparing to the blue lines and again, well, the reason is the smaller the parameter you define for span, the more local, right? The, the smaller uh, 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 intervals that you are going to include your observations for that uh, predictions of the linear uh, slope. So um, in general, what it means is um, if you um, are basically including more observations each time for running a predictions, um, obviously, uh, your curve will not be as jumpy as you will only including, let's say, one data point right to the extreme or maybe just like 1% of the data point uh, for running your regression model, then it will be very, very jumpy, right? So you will see uh, age of 30 will be uh, a very a low value with your predictions, but then, well, age of 31, because we are uh, moving slightly over, but then including uh, absolutely different um, uh, neighbors' observations uh, for your predictions, then the value of the age of 31 could be very, very high, and then back to 32 could be very, very low, because you're not including um, uh, more neighbors uh, for your predictions. So that's basically uh, the way how you want to interpret the models, right? By defining the, uh, the span parameter here, you can build different local regression models. But the idea is still the same. We are trying to build some nonlinear model in order to fit this data, uh, 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 data sets right here. All right, so <clears throat> the last and uh, the most important ones is the GAM uh, models. So again, the GAM models actually uh, is what we call the general addictive mo uh, models. So let me uh, write the full name here, the general addictive uh, models. So the general addictive model, it's basically uh, a model's uh, uh, a foundations of model that allow us to add uh, more general equations to one single model so that we can make a combination, right? So instead of like using one single variable to make a nonlinear uh, predictions, we can now have a foundations to actually put in all the approaches that we just learned, the natural spine, the smoothing spines, the local regressions all into one single foundations, uh, functional forms, so that we can actually uh, make a better uh, predictions with the combinations of this uh, different models that we, we just learned. So again, um, in the GAM models, uh, you need to um, uh, first uh, install the package GAM, right? And you have to call this out uh, in order to use this. So all you need to do is basically know what um, the functional form you are going to add in this GAM model. So um, in the GAM model, you can actually use um, the library uh, built-in functions like S, basically define the smoothing spines functions, and NS, basically define the natural spine functions, and LO, define the local regressions um, that we just seen uh, earlier. Again, you have to be very, very uh, careful. We are not using the spines library here. S function, NS function, and LO functions are all coming from the GAM libraries. It's only used as a wrapper in the GAM functions. So for example, if you are trying to build a GAM model, Right? You have to, you must define 
the natural spines functions form with the ns function here and the smoothing spines functional form with the s function here so let's go back a little bit here and trying to understand why is it important in terms of the syntax here so let's say i'm only interested to build a spine functions well how are you going to build a spine functions you have to use uh, this syntax here smooth dot spines and then put in the y uh, the x-axis and the y-axis and define the degree of freedoms so you don't actually put this whole thing here into a gam functions like this so you don't do that okay the reason is because well the gam functions can only take the arguments the wrapper that it's built in for its model. So it's just specifically, very, very specifically for that one particular uh, function to use. So in order to create a smooth spines, you have to use the S function here as a wrapper and define the degree of freedoms that you're gonna use here. <clears throat> All right, so <clears throat> here what we are seeing is um, we are building a first uh, GAM uh, uh, model fits with the GAM functions, the response uh, variable here, wage, we are using a combination of three parameter here, right, or pre, uh, three predictors here. So first, we are going to use the natural spines <coughs> of year, and we are going to break out the, uh, the, uh, the years into um, four internal knots. Again, the natural spine functions uh, built in for the GAM model uh, already uh, naturally uh, give you a qubit spine functions. So that means we are basically segmenting the years into four um, groups, but we still have the power uh, within uh, uh, the functions. And here, the smoothing spines basically define we are using age, and we're going to de define five degree of freedom to uh, allow uh, for using the smoothing, smoothing spines uh, for the age um, uh, 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 predictors. And lastly, we are basically just pass in one variable as a general functions, right? So educations. So again, if you are looking at your uh, uh, lecture notes, well, this is one functions here we are passing in and we are adding another functions and we are adding another functions here. So the general addictive model allow us to have uh, multiple functional forms to put into one gigantic model and still get a, uh, a good um, uh, 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 mathematical uh, uh, durations uh, for the models. So here, what we want to do is to basically pass in also the data sets, right? So uh, building the model in R, it's so easy. So we uh, save this, and then uh, if we print the summary um, of this model, again, uh, the, there is no coefficients that you can actually interpret because there's no data beta, right? So remember, we are basically building a, a gigantic one-line functions that include multiple functions in there. So there is no uh, parameter like beta that you can actually interpret anymore. But the only thing, or maybe a few things that you should note in this summary output is, for each functions, you want to know, well, how many degree of freedoms does it take, right? So in this case, uh, you have to know uh, that uh, the degree of freedoms that each uh, functional form actually takes in and also the significancy, right? So the inference of this uh, model, it's also similar to our regression model. So those are the things that you probably going to pay attention to, right? So you want to include something that is uh, statistically significant, but not something that it's not statistically significant. All right, so once we have a, a, a model defined here, then we want to plot it. So again, to plot the functions, very simple. Uh, you can basically just create a plot right, with uh, GAM1 and creating the standard error equals true and uh, plot with the blue color. So let's try this method here once. All right, so we have a plot, but this plot looks pretty ugly. And also this plot only include one predictors versus the response each time. So what do we mean by each time? I thought we only have one graph right here, educations. If you go back, you click back, you're going to see how age 
it's being used to make the predictions for uh, the response variable wages. And also, you can see how um, the years actually uh, it's uh, used right, to run the predictions. So you have three separate graphs right here, which it's not very convenient to see it all at once. So all, what you can do is to um, use uh, the powerful uh, graphing tools uh, in R to create um, like, a, like a space. You can create three spaces here and trying to put all three graphs into the, um, the space um, that we define. So here, what we want to do is to use the functions uh, PAR here and defines M float. And we're creating three uh, uh, roads, uh, actually three space right here, right? So one to three, so run this. So once the space is created, now let's plot this uh, uh, one more time. So plot dot uh, GAM, right? So this is the function we use, it's very special. It's built in for the GAM. And then we're gonna pass in the model and we are going to uh, see the standard error and this time we are see the red lines. Oopsie, oop, so dot GAM, so, oh, so let's see, GAM one right here, let's see. All right, so sorry, so the dot plot uh, dot gm it's, uh, it's a typo earlier. So <clears throat> here we have uh, the three uh, slot right here, and we basically fitting all the graph into the three slots uh, so that we can actually see this uh, graph all in once uh, to see how well it does. So obviously this is a very convenient tool uh, to use uh, for seeing the, uh, the predictions right from the models. <clears throat> Much more clear, at least. Um, it's not uh, 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 individuals, right, that we've seen earlier. Right? So it's very difficult to actually see the results um, uh, when they are uh, separate. Well, another very convenient tool uh, to use uh, in R is to use the ANOVA test to basically um, ask if we should have a more complicated model or not. So remember, uh, last time we used the ANOVA test to uh, see which polynomial uh, models will be, uh, it's a better uh, model to use um, uh, for, uh, for comparisons in the ANOVA test. And this time we're gonna do the same thing. We want to actually try to build three uh, different models. We start with uh, model one, where we have only the smooth uh, spines plus the educations. And then we are going to add more complication to it. We're gonna include year, the smooth splines, and educations. And we're gonna make it even more complicated, right? So the natural spines, year, and the smooth spine, age, and the educations. So that we can actually have uh, three level of complex uh, models here that we can compare. And all you need to do is to basically use the ANOVA test here it's built in in R. You don't have, uh, you don't need any library to uh, uh, use it, and you put in the uh, the model in order, right? So the 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 the, the lowest uh, complex levels, and then the medium uh, complex level, and the more most complex levels uh, models. If you want to see the F statistics, <coughs> you can actually define uh, test equals to F. But if you don't define it, it still report the p value for you, so that you can actually. Um, uh, uh, see the significance. All right, so let's run this. Okay, so the results are just here. So uh, the first one we pass in, it's basically the baseline model. So it doesn't have any statistics report. But now when we compare the second model with the first model, it's statistically significant. That means, well, it suggests the second model, it's very, very different compared to the first model. Right, so the second model, it's a very, very uh, 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 different uh, model comparing to the first model, basically suggests the more complex model here actually improve, right? Improve uh, statistic uh, st significancy uh, uh, compared to the first model. And of course, uh, we want to also um, basically ask, hey, is the third model, the most complex ones, is the better model or a different model comparing to the second model or the first model? And in this case, the third model, it's not statistically significant. That suggests, well, even though we have a more complex model with the natural spines, 
years um, with four um, uh, uh, internal nodes defined here, uh, we still uh, not getting a uh, significantly different results. So that suggests adding this complexity there, uh, it's not necessary. So what it means is basically suggests the smoothing spine age uh, with five degrees of freedom, uh, it should be stay in, it should be in the model. However, the, um, the natural spines uh, year with four degrees of freedom is not a significant part of this um, model. Right, so it's it's not making any uh, 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 statistically differences um, comparing to the second ones. So the second model suggests year should just by itself. So that means, well, in this case, we should believe that the second model is the optimal models here, in uh, comparing to the first and the third ones. So I think the ANOVA test is a very very geni uh, 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 genius way to test out the model uh, uh, specifications. Um, which one should be used and which one uh, would be uh, a better uh, model uh, comparatively uh, to the others. So uh, try, try to use this uh, more often right, to, to build the simple model and then move on to more complex one and try to test out well in what degree of complexity of your model should be. Right? And at some point you, you will find it, well, you should stop at uh, some level uh, and not making your model too complicated or overfitting. Uh, in, in some cases. So this time we know that the second model is the best. So if we know we are having a second model, which is the best one, well, I'm going to make a predictions here. So now we are going to basically um, uh, print out our predictions here. So again, well, it uh, seems like a very uh, tedious thing to print out. Uh, we should actually plot it. Uh, but that's basically uh, the predictive values here. I should actually have the uh, just the head of the uh, uh, predictions. So uh, we're using the uh, uh, the data in our uh, samples, right? So wage, right? We're we're trying to use all the ages to make a predictions. Uh, 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 actually, not just uh, ages, uh, but we're using um, age, uh, year, and educations to make predictions with the second model right here. All right, so we can also uh, add some uh, additional piece to it, right? Just to play around, right? So instead of like the smoothing spines and the uh, natural spines, you can also add the local regressions model here by using the LO functions. So again, uh, you do not want to use, just to remind you one more time, you do not want to use the L O E S S functions. Okay, this is specifically a standalone uh, functions from the spine package. So it's not for GAM model. So if you want to define a local regression uh, in a G <coughs> GAM model, you have to use the L O functions here. Okay, so you have the local functions and you're going to use age and you define the spans right here, 0.5, right, uh, as the closest neighbor, right, 50% of your observation closest to, to the observations. And then um, plus the educations here. So now you build the model and you can now see the summary. So as you can see here, Right, all of them are statistically significant, so it seems like we are doing pretty well, right? Uh, in terms of including the uh, local spines, and again, well, if you want to see the results uh, from this data set uh, or from this model fit, you can actually print the graph just like how we did earlier, right? And try to see the difference. And the last thing that we want to do today, right? So it's a very long lecture, but I do want to make sure that I cover this one right here. So we have been using um, the uh, spine regressions, right? The natural spine, smoothing spines, and local regressions for regression problems. Remember, regression problem is when the response is a continuous number, right? And in some cases, um, it's pretty obvious our response variable might not be a continuous value. So our response variable can be a category, or maybe by class, or maybe it's a binary choice. So in this case, well, I would like to demonstrate how we can also apply the GAM functions form for a binary choice problems, a classification problems. 
So here, we are basically applying the same concept. We have different functional form that we can use to build a model, but this time we are building a model with a binary choice. So we are using uh, basically a response variable here, which we define age greater than uh, 250 is basically true, and anything below or equals to 20, uh, 250 is forced, right? It's a binary choice, true or false. It's basically a, um, uh, boolean here and we are trying to use um, year the smooth functions age and educations to uh, help making a predictions of this binary choice of true or false and here very important when you are using a GAM functions for a classification model especially especially for binary choice you have to define the family of distribution to use and this time we are using a binomial distribution so that's why you have to put the family equals to binomial here so <clears throat> here we're going to run this and now we're creating a, um, uh, a GAM functions fit uh, or GAM model fits uh, for a binary problem, a classification problem. You can print the summary here again. It will show you which one uh, uh, you actually include in your model. It's statistically significant. Um, the most significant is education, and then while well, the smooth, it's also uh, uh, statistically significant. Year doesn't seem too much. And again, well, if you want to actually uh, print the results, right, in three different uh, slots right here, since we already defined, right, so we are going to keep using the, uh, the three uh, uh, slots uh, case. So you can actually print the result here with the green color this time. And here you go. That's the result. So that's your visualization. So this is basically how year <coughs> um, uh, trying to uh, uh, make a predictions right of your wages and this is how ages uh, defined right so that's basically the predictions and the confident intervals very wide and also how educations right defines different uh, level of um, uh, wages um, uh, compare across uh, different uh, classes so again well this is a, a zero one choice here right so you basically have a the uh, the art of the probability uh, you define here so um, the interpretation is, um, again, um, uh, not so obvious uh, when you're using a, a GAM functions because there is a mixture of this uh, non-parametric forms. But at least uh, we know the inferences can be done. Right? So we can actually test which function is statistically significant and which one is not. And also, what's more important is um, uh, you can actually make a much better predictions with this mixture of different techniques and approaches uh, for nonlinearity uh, data. So that's why, well, to wrap this around, I would totally suggest you guys to um, play around with all this functional form and play around with the data sets and trying to make some visualization yourself and trying to make a uh, interpretations on these visualizations so that you can actually apply these techniques uh, to your assignments and projects. Um, if you have any questions, um, totally. I strongly recommend you guys to ask me um, and I would love to answer your questions. And I'm hoping that this um, uh, techniques that you learn in this semester will be helpful for you to build a stronger uh, uh, um, uh, data analysis uh, skills uh, for yourself in your career. So again, well, I'm gonna leave the videos here now and I will uh, definitely see you guys in the future videos. So good luck and goodbyes.